Before learning how to balance chemical equations, we must first understand how it relates to a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction is when one substance or more converts into a completely new substance or substances. During this chemical conversion, bonds are broken and created between new molecules and atoms. This forms completely new substances. Chemical equations represent these chemical reactions taking place. One of the most crucial concepts to remember about chemical equation is their balance. The law of conservation of mass states that mass is neither created nor destroyed, even by chemical reaction. Therefore, a chemical reaction neither creates nor destroys atoms. It only transforms the existing atoms into something new. I like to think of it like Legos. So say you have 25 different pieces of Legos and you built a horse out of it. Then you took it apart and decided you wanted to build a dog out of the same exact Legos. You built both these things out of the same matter, the same object, and really it was built out of the same atoms. In the same way, atoms will be transformed from one chemical to the next. Atoms will transform to build different chemicals, but the atoms themselves remain the same. Because atoms are not created, nor are they destroyed, the number of atoms of each element remain the same on both sides of the equation. Also, the number of moles remains the same on both sides of the equation for each element. We have two sides of a chemical equation. We start on the left with the reactants. These are the substances or substance you start with. The yield symbol indicates a chemical reaction has taken place. And on the right, we have the product, which is the substance or substances we end up with. Let's work out a few examples. So keep in mind that balancing chemical equations is a trial and error process, and it's going to require a bit of patience. But the more you practice, the quicker you will become and the better you will become at it. Starting here with zinc and hydrochloric acid on our reactant side, this yields zinc chloride and hydrogen on the product side. Remember, atoms are neither created nor destroyed according to the law of conservation of mass, so the number of atoms for each element must be the same on both sides of the equation. But they're not right now, so what can we do? Well, we can balance this chemical equation out. Starting with zinc, it looks like we have one zinc atom. We know this because the number in front of each element or molecule indicates how many atoms it has. No number means the element or compound has one atom. So we have one zinc atom here, one hydrogen atom, and one chlorine atom. On the product side, we have one zinc atom, we have two hydrogen atom, indicated by this number two subscript, and we have two chlorine indicated by this number two subscript that is attached to it. So our zinc looks like it has a one-to-one -one ratio and it's balanced, so that's great. Hydrogen, however, is not balanced and chlorine is not balanced. Now, I want to point out something very important. The area that I have circled is called the coefficient, or basically it's where the coefficient goes. When manipulating numbers on the equation, you may only change these coefficients. The numbers down here, the subscripts, you must never ever change these. If you change these subscripts, then you're going to change the entire compound. Okay, so let's start by attempting balancing out hydrogen. We could put a coefficient of two here, and that will give us a two hydrogen. So hydrogen is now balanced. Now this coefficient is going to also be multiplied with the entire compound. So in other words, the two is going to be multiplied by every single element attached to it. So we multiply it by hydrogen, but also by chlorine. This will give us two chlorine. And now chlorine is balanced out. So now we have the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. And it's abiding by the law of conservation of mass meaning we have the same amount of atoms of each type of atom on both sides, also meaning we have the same amount of mass or the same number of moles of each atom on both sides. Next, let's try phosphorus plus chlorine yields 
phosphorus pentachloride. Starting off with phosphorus, we have four phosphorus indicated by the subscript. We have two chlorine, and I want to point out here that we have a compound of pentachloride together. This compound is made of two different elements, both phosphorus and chloride. It might be tempting to multiply the number five to the phosphorus, but this would be totally wrong. The number five only belongs to the chlorine. The subscript only belongs to the element it is attached to. Unlike the coefficient, which is applied to every atom or every element in the compound. That being said, phosphorus has one mole or one atom and chlorine has five moles or five atoms. These phosphorus are unbalanced. So let me try this little trick of multiplying the amount of atoms of each side. Keep in mind, this trick doesn't always work, but it's worth a try, especially with a simple equation. So let's multiply four times one, and this is going to give us four. Then we add the four to one of these two places, so it can manipulate the number of phosphorus. I'll add it here. And this gives me four phosphorus on this side. Also, remember you have a coefficient. That number is multiplied by every single element in the compound. So we also multiply this four by five chlorine and we'll get 20 chlorine. Now that our phosphorus is all balanced out, let's look at chlorine. We now have two on the reactant side and 20 on the product side. What can we add in front of the chlorine to make it 20? Well, we can add a 10 and then 10 times the two will give us a total of 20 chlorine atoms or moles. Awesome, so we're all balanced out here. Let's go ahead and move on to one more practice problem. Nitrogen plus hydrogen yields NH3. On the reactant side, we have two nitrogen and two hydrogen. I just want to emphasize that we have one compound with two different elements, both the nitrogen and hydrogen element. Any coefficient that is placed in front of this compound will be applied to both. And in other words, the number will be multiplied by both the nitrogen and the hydrogen. The subscript three, however, only applies to hydrogen. Remember, the subscript only applies to the element it's attached to. With that being said, we have one nitrogen and three hydrogen. If we place a coefficient of two here, we multiply it by both elements and we get two nitrogen and six hydrogen. How can we balance out this ratio of two to six? We can put a coefficient of three here and we get three times two hydrogen. We're left with six hydrogen. So everything is balanced out here. There is equal amounts of atoms of each element on both sides, as well as equal amounts of moles. Now, this can be a bit confusing if you're not sure what moles are, but just know that the amount of moles will be equal to the amount of atoms. Alrighty guys, so I have this last practice problem for you guys to go ahead and balance out on your own. I'll go ahead and have the answer for you at the end. 